Ninjala first caught my attention due to how similar it looked to Splatoon. I'm not normally a fan of multiplayer focused experiences, but Splatoon's J-pop inspired world and uniquely addicting gameplay made me a huge fan. Still, there are a few things about Ninjala that make it unique, which was enough to make me jump in day one. Let's get this straight out of the way. Ninjala isn't perfect. There's a lot of room for growth, but these are the growing pains all free to play titles go through. This review reflects only the state of the game around a week or so after launch, so most of my issues will hopefully be addressed over time. Ninjala is a free to play game that doesn't waste too much time getting you into the action. Outside of a short opening cutscene and a video tutorial, there isn't much else stopping you from immediately jumping into an online match. Players can choose between 8 playable ninjas. Baraka, Burton, Emma, Jane, Cappy, Lucy, Ron, and Vamp. Each of these young ninjas can be fully customized with a substantial amount of cosmetic items. However, most of these items happen to be locked behind the premium in-game currency. I spent the bulk of my time playing as Lucy because she's easily the cutest and I am willing to defend that. Matches are split between two modes, Battle Royale and Team Battles. Both are primarily played the same way, with Battle Royale being an 8 player free for all and Team Battles being 4 vs 4. Sadly, there's a slight learning curve during early matches, given that Ninjala does a pretty bad job of explaining how to play. As I mentioned earlier, the only instructions that players receive are in the form of a short video. Still, there is a training mode that allows players to mess around with controls, but I learn almost entirely in online matches through trial by fire. Characters use the power of gum-based ninjutsu during matches. This allows players to form weapons such as katanas, hammers, and yo-yos out of gum to take out their enemies. Each of these weapon types has four variations with slightly different skills and statistics. No weapon is necessarily better than another, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. By using metals unlocked during matches, players can purchase shinobi cards to customize their playstyle further. These cards add effects such as increased energy or visibility that may give players a slight edge over their enemies. Matches of Ninjala are won by the player with the most points at the end of the round, and points are gained by destroying drones and defeating enemies. Enemies can be knocked out by reducing their health to zero, though the best way to get points is by scoring an Epon. Players can score an Epon by defeating an enemy opponent from a parry state, from a gum bind, or using gum ninjutsu. Overall, I really like how Ninjala plays. Though it might look button mashy from afar, minute to minute combat requires a good amount of strategy. Knowing when to strike, fall back, or focus on taking down drones separates winners from losers in most matches. The one thing holding Ninjala back from true gameplay greatness is the previously mentioned parry states. When two players try to hit each other at the same time, they enter a parry that is settled in a rock-paper-scissors-esque battle. While this may seem like an effective way to settle clashes, it makes many losses feel as if they were due to luck instead of skill, which can be incredibly frustrating. Most games as a service are free to play, meaning they are chocked full of microtransactions. In Ninjala, all of these microtransactions, except for the story DLC, are entirely cosmetic. While some of these items can be bought individually in the in-game store, the main drive for players will be the Ninjala Pass, Ninjala's version of a battle pass. This has fewer cosmetic items than I like to see in battle passes, but it's a good investment if you find yourself having a good time. As for the story content, the narrative follows Van training in ninjutsu with his grandfather. During their training, the two encounter deadly space ninjas. The space ninjas have been kidnapping young ninjas from Earth for seemingly nefarious reasons, so Van sets out on a quest to stop them. This plot feels pretty throwaway and is easily skippable. The story levels themselves aren't much better and come off as mostly repetitive sequences. If you think you simply must have more Ninjala content or want to play offline, however, this isn't a terrible alternative to the online battles. The only part of the story available at the time of writing is the first chapter, so things might get better in later chapters. Ninjala has a ton of potential to become the next big online game. While its single player experience leaves a little to be desired, playing online with others in battle royale or team battles is a ton of fun. There's a nice balance found in the game's premium offerings, but much of what it does right can be found completely for free. Hopefully, continued support by the developer will iron out any rough patches to make this a long lasting online experience for Switch owners. Noisy Pixel is giving Ninjala a 7.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching, you guys. Make sure to check out the full review at noisypixel.net. Let us know in the comments who your favorite Ninjala character is. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.